Hi guys! Hi everyone! I'm gonna share now pin to let you know where we are today but if you follow locally you probably know. I'm sorry I just cannot wait that's why I'm here two minutes before just to check the connection and if you guys will join you also can say hi you can tell me if you can hear me if everything okay and I just leave you this picture just to enjoy a beautiful Friday evening uh, also probably that's a unique picture because usually this time in the middle of September uh, it's really soft weather it's about like 28 29 degrees it's very warm and beach is full of people but right now we don't have anyone so it's a unique part and yeah you can enjoy you really can enjoy the view I will show you a little bit the far part of the Barcelona and yes we already have two people who join hi guys how are you please let me know if you hear me well I'm having a new headphones so I hope you can hear me and if everything okay we have a one minute before I introduce myself and I will tell you where we're going so I just let you to enjoy our view our local town the people enjoy the walk playing volleyball running so a really sporty city okay so it's six o'clock and it's time to switch the camera hi guys my name is Ksenia and welcome to Barcelona today we're walking in the new area probably for most of you that will be a new place where are we gonna go so I hope right now we're gonna have more than two people so please don't forget that today I'm gonna grab 40 minutes of your time just to show you one of the most important part of Barcelona because probably if you think about this city you think well what are you gonna show us Gaudi building maybe Gothic area Montjuic Gaudi Park all those things you will see once you will come to Barcelona without any guys it's really easy to reach but I would like to show you the place when the real citizen when the local people live including me I moved from the old town here and I'm very happy that I'm here right now so let me change the camera and first of all I will show you how to find the place from where we're gonna have our tour today okay so Mediterranean Sea there is a W hotel so here you have a famous Barceloneta beach uh, there let me step onto the bench you can also see this little gray hill is the Mount Juic mountain right and before those two towers, two towers of Mafe, you have the old town, right? So, all the part that you can see after those two towers, all those, it's artificial area. And the place we're staying right now called Marbella. Translate as the beautiful, beautiful sea. Which actually, actually is a really beautiful sea, as you can see we have the car which cleans all the dust and garbage we have here. Uh, one of the best area in the town. Why we say that? First of all, because of the location. We're really located next to the sea. That is one of the cleanest part. You are not gonna hear the offers like, please buy the beer, please buy this and that. It's really quiet. The local people prefer to come here. Also, if you want to enjoy the beautiful view, and of course the sound, if you want to join a beautiful view and grab something to eat, you have to go into this place. There's a special beach cafe which is called Chiringuito. So we have them almost everywhere along the beach during the summer period. Also, you can play volleyball, you can enjoy the time, and it's just a five minute walk from the real town. So, right now, I wanted to show you how to go to the town. Okay, from here. You will see a really, really big street which calls Rambla de Bobleno. So let me please explain you what it means Rambla. Rambla is the old name of the word channel. The channel basically was the part, uh, like a little channel, where all the water after the river falls down and as a stream goes to the sea. So that's why we have a lot of Ramblas, which later became a main boulevard of the area 
Yeah, so once you go and Rambla, be sure that you'll never get lost because it always brings you to the certain of direction. So, second thing, Rambla de Poblenou. De, it means belongs to certain area. Poblenou, we're good people, we're gonna cross when it's red, otherwise it's uh, 200 euros fine. So, Poblenou, actually translate like a new village. Poble, pueblo, village. No, new. It's a Catalan word. So, why it's a new village? Mm, because it was a new village. Uh, let's say more or less new because it has a history of almost 300 years. But compared to Barcelona, it's really new because Barcelona has more than 2000 years. So actually, before the 19th century, Barcelona was really small. So everything located there in the old town was Barcelona. And it was surrounded by a different little villages. This area was actually known as the place with a lot of fields, like so cultivation area in the 17th century. In the 18th century, uh, it was occupied by a lot of um, gypsies families. Yeah, I will say that. And I wanted to show you a couple of pictures, how it looks like before now. This is little picture will show you the situation in the end of the 18th, the beginning of the 19th century. So the place we're walking right now is was actually full of these barracks. So all the gypsy people and also the fishermen, you know, they need to wake up early, they need to go to, to grab some fish and sell it. All of them used to live here and it was the worst area. So imagine you live here, of course, the life does seem a really good place and if you leave uh, and for example if you're a rich person you don't really want to come here so many uh, people from Barcelona before the end of the 20th uh, century they didn't know that this area the probably know exists is the area where we can see right now I will show you now it's a beautiful park so what happened Olympic Games Olympic Games happened and they decide to destroy, there was a railway, uh, exactly the road when we're gonna cross right now. It was a railway, so it was a special station, Pobleno. They decide to destroy it and build the place when we see now. So after 1992, this area became a local area, Pobleno and actually one of the most prestige area. We have the old town here, we also have a new houses. Uh, but what I would like to tell you more is the history of this town, how it became famous. It happened after when uh, this area first be, uh, was the place for the gypsy people and the poor people, but before the Olympic Games. So before that, and I will show you this old train which brings you to the Poblino. Before that, they decide uh, in the 19th century to build here the factory area, which means that they have a lot of space. Uh, that was a time of the Industrial Revolution because it was a 19th century. Of course, in the old town, they have no space to build the factories and they decide to build it here. They left this area with the barracks, just to remember you how it looks like before, right? And in the middle, they decide to build a many, many factories, which one I will show you in the few minutes. Sorry, I'm gonna cross the road. So, just a sec, guys. Because I'm afraid that you're not gonna hear me because of the cars. Yes, could we? Yes, we can. Okay, so since the 19th century, this place they called as a Catalan Manchester because it was full of factories, people live here. They built a factory which was like a big, big area. And little by little, once we're getting closer to the heart of the area, I'm gonna show you the, one of the most important parts. So. The first in our list is this cute little house. Maybe someone will say it. it's not that really nice, but to be honest, 
This is the heart of Pobleno. This little town, which was three times bigger from here from the left and from there to the right, was the first farm with chicken, with um, uh, pigs, with different animals. And there was five generation lives here. The last lady from this generation was Abuela. Abuela means a granny, Assumpta as I know, translate as assumptions. So this beautiful lady used to live here and everybody knows her as the granny of the town. You can imagine what kind of life it could be because there was a main gate, couple of windows, all of them look so chaotic, but believe me, if you Google it then, for example, in YouTube, you can see a lot of video of this town, how this lady used to sit here, and she was really welcomed for almost everybody. She also uh, can give a space for the people who didn't have a place to sleep. So she was really nice. She was really cute. And I say was because of the coronavirus. So she passed away in March, which is really sad. And now the local people uh, they trying to collect the money to protect this little house as the memory of this beautiful lady, also as the memory of this town. Because little by little, government decides to take this location. And if you remember, just five minutes before, we was on the beach. So they create a new project for this town, Arroba 22, like dot 22, which means that they're gonna adopt this beautiful town for the new houses. Okay, like they start first from this part. So it was the oldest, the oldest houses for the say the families who had a lot of kids. So it was like a social houses, but. And uh, after the Olympic Games, what they did is they basically started to buy the territory of the people who used to live here in the small little towns, like one of them I will show you, uh, sorry, like small uh, houses, like you can see the part of them. They say like, I'm sorry, we cannot renovate them, so we're going to buy this territory, we're going to destroy, and we're going to build those new houses. Um, I'm not going to talk about the design. Uh, because yeah it's looked like a house but the sad part is that they destroy the heart of the area because from the 19th century we have very very few of these uh, little houses and the locals they're trying to protect their mood of this area of this neighborhood so we are now going to the oldest part and we're gonna see everything where the locals protect uh, from the 19th century. Well, not this bar, but anyway, looks really, really good. So, just to remember you, we're coming from Rambla de Pobleno. We're coming back to this area, but I just wanted to show you the oldest part. So, from the Rambla de Pobleno, you have to turn to the right. You go all the way on this street until, until you arrive. Here. I hope that car were not gonna stop me from the back. So the street called Ferracaril and it will be really easy for you to find this place because when you take this street you will look at the right and you'll start to see first of all you will hear like kids playing here you will hear that there is a lot of life and energy and then in a few minutes you will arrive to the oldest square of the town and here you can imagine how it used to look like uh, in the middle of the 19th century this square called Plaza del Prim Plaza a square place let me show you it's here Plaza del Prim and I'm telling you that this is the heart of the Pobleno because this street and the one we just passed by there's the oldest street of the town. All this area, before they gave them the name Pobleno, they used to call Taulat, which translates like rural land, right? And one of the first, let's say the oldest houses was those white Andalusian style little houses, it was the places for the fishermen. 
And here, the place called El Pescadors. Now it's the modern uh, restaurants. It's actually really good sea of food. Uh, they used to have a bar when the, all the fishermen, all their friends, all the people from the town came to take some fresh beer or clara, it's the mix with the lemon juice or vermouth. And then they're taking this street to go to the sea. So now as you, as you see from the video, this is what the locals trying to find. And actually this tree, they call it Las, uh, I think like sombreros or para paraguayas, like it's something which to cover you and protect you from the rain. It's actually really beautiful and this is a historical a historical trees as well. So it's really really nice city and really recommend you to come here first before you go in the heart of the area. And another fact, here we have in general three of those houses and this is my place. I'm living here since March and I'm really happy. So if you want to see how the local people live in Poblenou, um, feel free to come to Barcelona and book the tour with me. So I will show you, I will show you the life, the real life of the Poblenou. Okay, guys, so now we're leaving Plaza del Prim. Okay, we're going next, we're going more deep into the area. We're going on the street Taulat. As you remember, I already told you that Taulat translates as a rural land. And we're going to go to the left. Why are we going to go to the left? Because I wanted to show you the local streets. So we, in general, have two streets. One is Las Ramblas. It's the main boulevard, let's say the posh area, which usually right now is the place for tourists, right? Because it's easy for you when you come to the town. You always go to the main street. You're not going to get lost. So, of course, everything is really expensive there. A lot of locals, they cannot afford to have their own uh, bar there or the restaurants so they became a bankrupt and they moved to the little streets so one of them I'm gonna show you and they have a few historical places where I really really like so the street calls Maria Aguilo and of course if you come into Barcelona if you go in if you really want to enjoy your local food you have to find a bar de toda la vida de toda la vida it means from the whole of your life like de toda la vida me voy por aquí like for all my life i used to come here like in this place de toda la vida he comido esta hamburguesa like the whole of this life i used to eat like this same burger and etc etc so it's really really typical phrase for the local people so we have the bar toda la vida and one of them is this place, La Pubilla de Taulat. So, Taulat, you already know the name of the area. El Año, you can see that it's from 1886. And Pubilla, in Catalan, it means the oldest daughter of the family. So, as you can see, the oldest daughter had the oldest interior. You also can come here and buy the collections of wine from different areas. And if you come with your bottle, for example, you also can ask uh, different kind of, of different kind of wine. You can also mix those wine. You have white, rose, uh, dry red wine, uh, the half sweet red wine, and I think they also have here like olive oil, olives, a couple of the products. So yeah, this is how it looks like. So you also have the memory of how the people used to prepare the wine they really like this it's like a let's say catalan version of uh, portuguese azulejo so i really recommend you this place before they used to put a little table here so you can also grab some tapas and drink wine here but now because of the coronavirus not all the time you can see it even if it's allowed if you have a place outside so, okay, La Pobilla, that's the first part. Second part, imagine if you don't feel good after all and you don't want to have a hangover next, next day. Of course, you need to go to the pharmacy just in case to grab some pills. So, this is my favorite pharmacy. Look, how beautiful is that? 
and also how old is that? Almost everywhere on the places which was built in the 19th century always can find the date when it was built, 1864. Pretty old, right? Of course, inside is hard to keep it with the same condition because they need to repair everything. Also, it has to be... Uh, yeah, there's many factors. I'm not going to explain that to you. But anyway, from the outside, is really, really beautiful. And now let's look in the street. So straight, little, cozy street with a lot of local people who are walking here. They have their places when they go in for the, to, to grab some fruits, some local places in the restaurant. This is a flower shop. It's not that typical to have a lot of flowers, but not in the Poblino area. Almost everywhere you can see that they try to decorate these very old houses. If they don't have the money to repair them, they put a lot of flowers. And I think we have kind of a fiesta here. We always have something. So that's the reason that we decorate uh, the street with a lot of plastic, you know, just to not buy a new thing. As you can see, it's really easy. You just paint the bottle and you can put them everywhere. And yeah, you already have a party here. Yeah, by the way, right now we have this complicated situation that uh, nightclubs closed. I mean, they can be opened, but you're not allowed to dance there. So people are thinking that's the best way to solve the problem is to make a party outside. And that's the reason you can see this decoration almost everywhere. So that's the first reason. It's actually my, um, my version of that. But also, uh, every year, each area in Barcelona, and we have 12 of them, like 12 different areas, all of them have their birdie, uh, birthday party. So, of course, Poblino also have their birthday. I don't even remember which day is it, because one of the most important birthdays has another aria. And here we see, yeah, Cola del Drac. So it's a dragon, dragon day. And we have a little dragon or monkey here. So now we know. Okay, we're not going to continue the streets because there are so many places. But now you know, this Maria Guillo can help you to find the best thing here plus chocolate yeah if you like chocolate if you have nuts if you like nuts and all the local products you need the shops like this al granel so don't forget that what i wanted to show you is the symbol of the area do you remember in the beginning of our walk i told you that poblino is the place it's like a uh, they call it catalan manchester right because of different factories so basically this is how catalan people became rich this is how Eusebio Guel, the best friend of antonio gaudi became, and his father became rich and started to invest all his money well almost all his money of course not all of them into the gaudi's project and many of those factory you can find right now in the area of poblino um, like 30% of them are abandoned and some of them as you can see became a library so this is a library very comfortable one so this is the library where I'm going for example because I live just a few minutes from here but before this factory had the name Saladrigas it was a textile factory it was one of the biggest factory in the whole area and it was the also place when the people leave so they work here and they live here so that was the living part so the houses here we cannot see because a part of them is the part of the new house so in case if you want to see how the factory used to look like before you can come to this square really next to the main street and you can have some industrial picture and of course chimeneas or chimneys so a lot of those chimneys as a symbol of that time we have almost everywhere in Barcelona and the majority of them are here in Pobleno so let us come back to the first place to the first boulevard Ramla del Pobleno because I wanted to show you a place when you have to bring every kid 
and maybe you heard that we have a lot of chocolate here in Spain. We love chocolate because actually cacao, uh, it was one of the things which Christopher Colomb bring here to Barcelona in the 16th century. And for almost a hundred years, it was a secret. So no one in Europe knows what is a chocolate. Only us, only Spain. But then, you know, gossips, fake marriage, and etc. So this is how all Europe knows about Spain, uh, chocolate. Uh, apart of the chocolate, we love churros. Churros is a mix of flour, salt, and the hot water. And you deep fry it. It's like um, little croquettes. You deep fry it in peanut oil. And you can later leap, dip it down into the chocolate, which is also really nice and really tasty. And a third thing, which is really famous here, is horchata. Horchata, it's a drink. When you taste it, it can remind you an almond, almond milk, but a little bit more sweet. Like imagine you mix almond milk with honey and maybe a little bit of the coconut milk as well. So, it's made from chufa. Chufa, it's a tiger nut. I don't know if you try it uh, before, it's really healthy. It's vegan. Well, in case if you're a vegan, it's very good for you. Uh, it's the best if it's, for example, it's really hot, it's a summer, you wake up, you really need an energy to wake up or to do something, but you don't want to eat. So you go into this place, or chaterias, especially here if you are in the Poblenau, you go in El Tioche. And, with all permission, because I'm not allowed to film the faces of the people, but first of all, I wanted to show you that this is the oldest probably the oldest in the whole Barcelona, uh, Orchateria, from 1912. And that's true, you can see. Everything, what you can see here, is from that time. I don't know why they do not invest to repair all this, but maybe it's a proof that it's really, really old. So here you have ice cream, really good, local ice cream artesano and also horchatas this is what you have to remember horchata this is what you have to ask and this is how it's going to be written in catalan cucurruchos it's before this one so basically they ask you do you want an ice cream in cucurrucho or not or in tarrina tarrina is this one or you want a horchata and i really recommend you to have horchata. Usually, you're gonna have horchata probably like in this or in this glass. So it's a really big portion, it's really sweet. So if you try it for the first time, it's better to share. Because maybe you're not gonna like it. But believe me, it's healthy, it's good. And after this, there's a guarantee that for four hours, you're not gonna eat anything, you're gonna have a lot of energy, and you don't have to be worried about your shape because you're not gonna take a lot of kilos so guys uh, it's already half an hour and I show you almost everything in this town of course we can continue we can go inside of the theater well it's the oldest theater Alliance from 1869 here uh, now I hope it's still open because it was closed for a long time because of the COVID. As you see, like, do you remember I told you that in the Rambe de Poblenau, there is a lot of places, a lot of restaurants. It's a little bit hard to find a good one. So it's better always to go to La Pubilla or send me a message and I will send you a list with the best places here. Otherwise, you can try here frozen paella, or maybe not fresh sea food, and I don't really want you to have this bad experience. So, I told you that I'm not gonna have 
a lot of like I'm not gonna take a lot of your time it's just a half an hour quick tour and one of the best area in Barcelona so guys if you have a question first of all you can become a locally you know that it's a little bit less than 10 euros and you have a communication with almost whole locally so please join us support our community we try to do our best to show you the unique area which probably you cannot find by your own so we do our best for this 30 minutes with the online tours uh, and also you have a second option you can join my Instagram and you can text me and I always can send you uh, good tips about the place I live or around all the Spain say so sorry for that <laughs> I was really excited I was really happy to see you guys I hope you will see this video one more time to put some notes and have some ideas for the next time you're gonna go to Barcelona and I send you a big kiss a big hi I wish you a good Friday and see you next time